Thank you for being with us here this morning. Um, my name is Stephanie Fritz and I'm with the Office of Christian Formation in the Presbyterian Mission Agency. I'm joined by um, a lot of talented folks this morning. Um, first off is my colleague in ministry, Miata Wilson. Miata, if you'll just give a wave. Miata is um, one of the reasons we keep operating here in the Office of Christian Formation. David Maxwell, he'll be introducing himself more later, but he's with us from Presbyterian Publishing. Um, and then we have Rachel Watson. Rachel Crosby Palmer, both writers for the curriculum. You'll be hearing more from them. And Joanne Sharp, one of our um, great youth leaders out in the PCUSA. Um, and then we're going to kind of kick off here in just a moment with John Leedy, but John, you can give kind of a wave. John's one of the co-moderators of Presbyterian Youth Workers Association. So just a few um, things about how we're gonna run this morning's webinar. This is meant to be for you, um, casual, hoping that you all have some things that you'd like to engage in. But we're gonna begin here in a few minutes with uh, David walking us through a module of Follow Me um, with regards to you know, do using a youth module. So David's gonna walk through that. There will be a question and answer following his presentation. And then we're gonna engage with uh, Rachel and Crosby and dig deeper into, they wrote a couple of modules and they're gonna talk with us about that. And then Joanne's gonna talk with us about what it's, um, her experience of using this curriculum in a church. Many of you may be using it, maybe looking to use it. At that point, we'll sort of open it up for conversation, more questions and engaging. This is a great time too. You've got David's ear. And so any feedback and um, things that you would like to see, I think we're, have been excited about the Follow Me curriculum for all ages and stages. And um, it's done some really, people have used it in really great ways over the last, um, gosh, David, how long has it been now? Since September. We've Since September, it yeah. A year so, ago, almost. Just seems like longer, but we've been talking about it for oh, yeah. a long time, right? Right, right. <laughs> So the Office of Christian Formation um, believes in doing ministry in partnership. So not only do we partner with Presbyterian Publishing to get, um, to make sure our faith formation leaders are equipped, we also partner with five organizations in um, faith formation leaders. And one of those organizations is Presbyterian Youth Workers Association. So I'm gonna welcome John Leedy as the co-moderator of PYWA, and he's gonna bring some greetings and tell us some stuff. John. Thank you, Stephanie, and good morning, friends. My name is uh, John Leedy, and I'm one of the co-moderators of Presbyterian Youth Workers Association, and along with my fellow co-moderator, uh, Reverend Peppa Paniagua, and our executive director, Brian Kuhn, and our recently outgoing co-moderator, Shannon Guzzi. Hi, Shannon. Um, uh, it is a thrill to uh, welcome you all to this webinar, but also to celebrate and uh, uh, lift up this Follow Me curriculum. Uh, you know, we are, as a youth worker support organization, we are always on the lookout for um, resources that are rich and deep, but also uh, make the work of youth workers just a little bit easier. And so uh, as we've reviewed this curriculum and, and seen the ways that it, it also supports our mission of connecting, upholding, and inspiring youth workers, uh, it, it, is a, it is a thrill to see this continue to be rolled out in our uh, denominational life. Of the many uh, social media platforms out there that are uh, engaging the work of, of curriculum discovery and uh, processing the application of curriculum in congregational settings. Uh, one that we wanna make sure that you all know about is the PYWA um, Facebook page, the link to which I've just, oh, I'm sorry, I've just direct messaged that to someone. Um, the link I am uh, putting in the chat. Uh, this is one place where we would love to hear more about your experience with this curriculum, ways that you have uh, 
seen it come to life in your contexts. Uh, I'd also encourage you to check out the uh, Office of Christian Formation Facebook group, uh, as well as pywa.org. And so these are all resources that uh, seek to celebrate and uh, connect and uphold and inspire the work that you all do so faithfully. And so um, it is uh, it, it is a privilege to be a part of this webinar. I will be listening as as carefully as anyone. I had exactly nothing to do with the authorship of it, but I know uh, folks like Rachel Watson, uh, who I've had the pleasure of working with before, and and many of the other auth authors on this project are spectacular. And so we cannot support this curriculum enough and we cannot support you all enough. So thank you all very much for your time today. I'll be around in the chat for a while if there's anything that I can help be a resource with, but otherwise, uh, Stephanie, back to you. Yeah, thank you, John. Um, and great to see a lot of our Presbyterian Youth Workers Association folks here. If you don't know about PYWA, the other thing would be to go to pywa.org and find out more about how they um, support youth workers, just a great group of leaders. So, all right, and we'll be sharing some other links and um, some more resources and whatnot that we have from our office as well, but we're gonna dive in. Think that uh, most of us, a lot of us have arrived now and David, I am going to turn it over to you. Please right. introduce yourself and you have the stage. Sure, sure. Thanks. It's good to see, good to see um, all of you all here, and thanks for the invite. Um, we have a, a person on staff who's out on uh, maternity leave right now, Katie. Um, see, I already forget her name. <laughs> um, um, Katie is out, um, just had a baby, and um, she prepared this before she left. So um, I'm presenting her presentation for her and happy to do so. We're a small group here that work um, in the offices. I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. I've been at the Presbyterian Publishing for, gosh, since 2004. Before that, I was in World Mission. Before that, I was teaching in South America at a seminary. And before that, I was a street minister in New York City, working with um, Central American refugees. So happy to be with you all. This curriculum, I'm going to start sharing my screen. And I'm really pleased that two of our writers are here. I mean, it's great. We always deal with each other by email, but we talk all the time too, but it's always fun to see you all. Um, uh, I need to share. Uh, you just need to do the from beginning. Yeah. There it is, yeah. There we go. So um, one of the reasons that I think the curriculum is, is popular is because really when we created it, uh, we did all these consultations with the church, right? So we met because we're an agency of the church. Um, we of course met with different offices in the building who are networking with um, congregations, and we had a couple presbytery consultations, we met with seminary professors, and we met most importantly with potential users um, in the church. This is not a Presbyterian specific curriculum, but, you know, as a denominational publisher, I'd say 90% of our market is Presbyterian, right? Although we are used also by, by Methodist, United Church of Christ, some Baptists actually, um, I think uh, progressive Baptists use our curriculum. So when we were coming up with the concept, we knew that we wanted an all age curriculum, um, but what approach would we use was the question, right? Um, we have a lectionary based curriculum. As we did our research, we found that, um, we wanted to go a different route with this curriculum. As we were listening to people, we kept hearing the words practices. Um, I think we, you know, all curriculums are focused on Bible study, but the approach that you use, you think about what's going on around you and your context, the church, what it needs. 
and living in a country that we live in right now where people with the loudest microphones are spreading not Christian love a lot of times. We kept hearing, you know, we need stuff showing people really what it means to love our neighbors. Um, so that's what we did. We, we built a, um, a, a curriculum then around 36 things, practices that Jesus did or Jesus said to do. We're pretty close on those. Um, and of course, when we started looking at lists, you know, we came up with like 150 things. <laughs> so we needed to narrow that down because this is a curriculum and it needed to fit our little modules. So we, we narrowed it down to 36 practices. It's like, I'll show you next how they're lined up. And, but basically this, the, the approach is, this is something you can use with people in your church, whether it be one group or age level groups and focus on for four weeks, uh, four sessions per practice. Um, what, what are those things that you do to, uh, to um, deepen your practice of that, of that practice? So we've got um, leaders guides, age level leaders guides for young children, which are um, up to five, I believe. Multi-age children is six to 10. I'm sorry, I should back up. Meg Rift is my other co-editor for this curriculum. Meg and I worked intensely together and we still work intensely together um, to, to, to work out all the issues with the curriculum. And she does the young children, the multi-age, I edit youth and adults um, and the foundational essays. So uh, we have age, the multi-age, I think is six to 10. Youth, this for this webinar, we cover a broad age range, right? We've got younger youth, which is a huge challenge. We've got younger youth and older youth that we know will be using this. We know in a lot of churches these days, groups are, are mixed. A lot of churches tend to have one, one age level my church, like we get a crop of kids that seem to be around the same age and they grow up and then we get another one. So, um, and then adults, which can be young adults um, to older adults as well. There's a congregational guide piece, which is, um, has a lot of stuff in it for the preacher, for the worship leader, um, Campus ministry groups use our cafe leader guide, uh, discussion group guide in there. And actually some youth groups we see are using the cafe discussion guide as well. Um, and then there are church bulletin, uh, uh, church, uh, children's worship leaflets, children's worship leaflets, I think they're called. Um, the adult piece is different than the other pieces. There is an adult leader's guide but it only works with the reflection guide. We heard in our consultations that a lot of adults aren't attending Sunday school necessarily, but they still want to study. And so these are self-guided reflection guides that anyone can use um, individually and, and get through the practice. Um, we also produce conversation starter videos. So a small group can watch that um, I think some of the youth groups are using those as well. And that's where they hear from the foundational writer who came up with the, the four uh, dimensions of each practice um, and connected a Bible story with that. Um, they, they're giving a little bit of their thinking of, of what that week's theme is. We can talk more about that if you like. This is the 36. These are the 36 uh, practices. We have completed year one. Um, we release these three at a time and we try to group them around church year times. So in the fall um, is the follow Jesus one there on the left. 
then um, winter, and then spring. There's one unit in the spring that we uh, made six sessions so that it can be used during Lent, but it does not need to be used during Lent. All of these um, are timeless in a way. We can only release these because we're a small staff um, over these four years, but um, once we release it, you can use it at any time of the year. Hope that made sense. We originally scheduled this for a three-year rollout, um, and we just got overwhelmed. We're, we're just too small of a staff, and I'm sorry if any of y'all were affected by this. Um, we had to cut back our summer sessions and just move them back into, we, we reformatted this um, so that we could release in the fall, winter, spring, and we just hope that didn't mess too many people up. So the Youth Leaders Guide features, um, we've got a lot of writers um, of different types of backgrounds um, with different ideas. You see Crosby's on here. She's a camp leader. Um, Rachel's in a, in, a, in a church. We've got another one of our youth writers, Luther Young, is a music director and also does youth ministry in a Disciples of Christ Church up in Columbus, Ohio. Um, our editor is, well, we've all had youth experience, right? Because we've all been youth. But um, Beth Harrington Hodge is currently working with the youth writers. Beth used to be on staff here, um, um, editing curriculum, and she's wonderful. Just a bajillion ideas. She currently works on staff out at Louisville Seminary. The age range that we've got, because we knew for youth, you know, ideally we would have a younger, we would have two age groups for youth at least, um, but because we could only do one piece, we've, we know that younger youth in general want more concrete activities and older youth are more able to deal with abstract thinking. And that's why they're each part of the curriculum has options. So our writers have to figure out, you know, what's an activity in this part of the, of the session that might work for a younger group and which ones might work for an older group and include a good mix so that you as a leader can read through the options and figure out what will work best with your group. This curriculum now with you know, technology where it is um, and YouTube having so much on it, we, we do suggest a lot of videos and web links. And we assume now that churches have the ability to do this, to show it, even if it's you know, someone on their phone, you're gonna be able to pull up um, stuff. We, we don't, we try to not have youth be on their phones all the time during the lesson, but the session, but you know, sometimes they are searching for some word or some, um, some image that the curriculum suggests. So now I'm gonna just focus on one of the units, which is Welcome All. This came out as one of our first three sessions. Um, and so it's built around four aspects of welcome all. What is, what's that about? When we also designed graphically, the youth piece is always teal. That's your color is teal. The other pieces have different colors like congregational guide is yellow and young children is a different color. So all the teal ones are for youth. We begin with, um, suggestions knowing that the, that, the, that the leader of the youth group uh, may be a trained you know seminarian or educator probably is not it's a volunteer it may be a young adult it may be a parent or caregiver so we try to offer suggestions of reminding them of how youth will interact with this theme. 
both older youth and younger youth. We came up with um, this explanation of symbols. Each activity in the curriculum, what well, you'll notice has little symbols next to it, the type of activity it is. Honestly, this is probably more helpful to our writers just to make sure they've got a good mix of these sorts of activities throughout the, throughout the, um, the unit. Okay, so is this, uh, are we just gonna... Okay, so on this unit, this is just welcome all, right? Hospitality, we are to welcome all. Um, there's one page here for the leader that gives you a real overall sense of what this unit's about, what the Bible connection is, and how youth are gonna connect with this entire unit. Each session also has this, but it's, it's um, uh, directed at the particular aspect that they're studying or they're looking at that, that week. The infographic poster is just a reminder that we've come up with incredible posters for each one of these units that you can or can't use. You can use if you if you want, they're extra. Some tie really closely into the session, others don't. Um, on Welcome All, I think the infographic poster is about forms of hospitality in, in ancient times, um, Jews and Christians and what, what different types of how people, very practical kind of factoidy sort of information. And the idea is you can purchase an infographic poster and have that out so that youth kind of are using that every week to, to react to or to look at or to tie in what they're talking about that week. Like, where do they see that in the poster? Okay, so here's session one. Um, and this is your first page of every session is gonna look like this and have these things on it. There's at the bottom left, there's a prayer for the leader. There's a goal statement on the left. There's your um, key for the types of activities. There's a brief description of what's going on in this session, the Bible study, how youth are going to connect. The session preparation includes anything that you, that you may need advanced timing to, to, um, to do before the session starts. And then we start with the, le with the session. I always want to say lesson, but it's session. Um, choice of words. Um, so there's always an activity at the very beginning, getting started, knowing that youth arrive at different times. There needs to be some kind of activity that ties into the lesson before they've even heard what it is about the session that, that week. Um, so there's something for them to do. The first, once they start, once you gather them, then that section is called introducing the practice. Um, and here's where you'll generally see choose one or more options, um, because that's where our writers are trying to provide something for the different um, extremes of the age level for youth or, you know, all, all people will be able to find something there to do. Then there's a Bible. So they're, they're, inter they're finding out what that week's, you know, the, the theme is, and then they're finding out where we see that in the Bible. Again, here are three different activities you could do. Um, you can, you know, the, reading the Bible story, this might be an older group that just, you know, is sitting and wants to just read it and talk about it. Um, there's a reenactment of the, of the Bible story. And then there's a word search. So there's a resource page at the end of the session that you'll see where younger youth might want to just kind of find, you know, find words around hospitality in there. Then they talk about the next part of the, of the session is finding the practice then and now. Where do we see, where do we see this dimension of, of hospitality um, around us in our community, in our school, in our family, in our church um, and society? Um, where do we see it being practiced? 
So this one has a, a video about immigration. Um, it's a great story of a, of a young woman who's telling about coming to this country and what it was like to, to be an immigrant in the US. Um, I can't read my, on my own screen because it's full screen, is uh, the welcome timeline. Um, this author, this was Luther Young, I believe, um, and he provided a resource sheet on when um, the church, when people were ex that had been excluded and the church started being welcomed into the church. Then there's a time for you to practice the practice. What are some, and this has activities for you to actually do something, right? Um, so this, again, has three activities that might work for, depending on your group, you, you, there should be something here that you can use. Then finally, a closing. We call it following Jesus. Um, so here's, and we really try to give the leader, and this is only based on research, okay? I'm old. I haven't been a youth leader forever, but generally we all want some words to say a prayer so we we ask the writers to come up with something here at the end that that helps them that they can read um, or an activity actually in this in this unit uh two of the final things are activities actually where youth are doing something to welcome each other and they kind of close out the session but it's 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 helpful just to to give the leader something that that they don't have to we never just say pray for the youth and their family you know or something like that we want to give you something concrete these are the two resource pages for this session um, they can they there can be zero resource sheets or there can be up to four i believe per session so there's the word search that the all of these pieces come, you can get it downloadable, but if you get the print copy, they're perforated edges, so you can tear these out and photocopy things. Um, the welcome timeline, there's the, the uh, timeline that the writer put together. That would probably be for an older, older group. So um, Katie Snyder, God, why was I not? Katie, good Lord, she's been gone for a month and I already forget her last name. Um, Katie's put together um, a lot of videos um, around Follow Me and also teaching Follow Me. So um, you can check out the, she's got one on the Youth Leaders Guide. So she walks through all of this and gives some more ideas. And this is our website. And there's a youth sample there. Um, and there's a Follow Me trailer. I think that's it. Great. Thanks, David. Okay, so I made note in the chat um, at this point, do you have questions for David um, around structure of the curriculum, how it's used, um, questions that you have for future modules that are coming out, anything goes here. Feel free to write something in the chat, I can read it, or if you'd like to just unmute and ask your question. That will be fine as well. There's not too many of us that that's um, limiting. There'll be other times for question and answers too, as you think about it. So I wanna give an option here. David, you mentioned, while people are thinking a little bit, um, you mentioned that uh, the cafe sessions, now those are located in the congregational guide? Yes. Okay. I think I would just point out too that if you're um, in a really small congregation, especially the congregational guide for each practice is a good way to hit some different things for all ages, including, yeah. It, yeah. And, it, and it has a multi-age session. I mean, uh, intergenerational. And session. an intergenerational session as well, right. Yeah. Okay, so in the chat, Jenna asks, um, do the sessions include a variety of ways to pray or is it all a few sentences spoken? <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, and I, I started catching myself as I was saying that. Um, a variety is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, we just want what we heard from feedback. I mean, you, you don't, don't, don't leave the leader hanging, 
um, give them a very concrete idea of what to do. Um, so often it is a spoken um, prayer that they, a brief prayer that they can lead, but often it is an activity, but it's carefully described. So you're not coming up with this on your own. Great, thank you. Um, Lizzie is asking the suggested time allotment for each session. Mm -hmm. Do these fill up an hour, 30 minutes, something in between? Yeah, we usually say 45 minutes to an hour it should, it should take. Okay. I'm sure we'll hear more about that in a bit. You can, if you do multiple like I mean, you could string it out over, you know, what we hear for some of these is people are using these for two weeks at it. You know, there's enough material in here to stretch it out if you want. Great. Yeah. Especially if you're um, doing the activities of the practices. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dana is asking if you include ways to follow up with parents and guardians so this becomes a family opportunity. Yeah, so we have a piece in the congregational guide and in the in the multi-age and the youth, uh, the young children, that's called Practicing the Practice at Home. And it includes um, ideas for the home. And so this is something you can, that the leader can put together, email, inform, whatever. The, um, the, and the idea of the curriculum is that each age group is doing something a little different, but also focused on the same aspect that week. So we hope that's gonna generate conversation for a, a family that goes because they may be studying a different Bible passage on on what that aspect was that week and the preacher may be preaching you know something a little different but around that aspect so we're the hope is that that will initiate a conversation focused around how do we welcome others um, and where did we see that and what kind of activities we did did I answer that question or yeah, Diana, does that answer that question for you? Yes, it does. Is And the congregational piece, I can't remember. Sometimes it's free and sometimes you pay for it depending on what's happening, correct? I mean, I don't mean that as, I think sometimes at apps you get it free and sometimes you don't. I don't know. So, But it's an, uh, an additional curriculum piece that you would purchase. Oh, yeah, there's nothing Okay, thank you. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the sample is free. <laughs> the sample right. is free. Yeah. Um, we are, you know, yeah, so we're an agency of the church. We get no money from the church except for through sales. So I'm sorry. We've tried to make this, knowing where churches are now, multiple pieces so you can pick what your church needs. Now, there's the church package, too, but um, these are all, you can buy one-off copies of these, and downloads are a little cheaper than the print-off, the print -off. Yeah. And I think that the affordability also comes in that these are module based and not date based, right? Exactly. And oh my um, gosh, and, and we prepared this pre COVID, you know, we were going down this road, thank God, this is not a lectionary right. <laughs> curriculum that we released, you know, when no one was meeting in person. So yeah, you yeah. can you can start whenever you want and start on any of these. So we talked a bit about the cafe discussion guides. Carol's asking if there's um, discussion of having cafe discussion guides for youth. I think that some of them are fine for older youth, right? Yeah, yeah, we're, and we're hearing that. We're hearing that there are a number of older youth that, that meet um, and, and do these. And you, you really, they can be used for campus ministry. When we designed them, it was sort of thinking of, we didn't really have anything for college or young adults that might not want to read the whole reflection guide, um, but they're being used in sessions and session meetings to open them and older youth. Yeah. Um, so David, as we move on to the next thing here in a minute, Lee's asking if you can repeat the web pages. I don't know if you can go ahead and put those web pages in the chat for everybody that were on Why your I do that? slide. Yeah. yeah, especially where Katie posted videos. I did 
put in the chat the link to the um, YouTube videos. This is, I think this is a great way. Hopefully David doesn't get uh, mad at me for saying this. These are free. <laughs> There's yeah. one thing free. That's and this true. is a good way to try out the curriculum, I think too, right? Is yeah. maybe you can use some of these videos in a youth group session. Um, maybe you dip your toe in that way. Maybe you then purchase the congregational guide for one practice and you use some pieces there. So I think there's ways to adapt this based on how much in person you're doing, how many folks you're, you know, reaching right now and what that looks like. So yeah. um, I do think there's a variety of contexts for youth. So uh, Steph Hare says that she used the intergenerational piece and she just hosted an intergenerational evening this past Wednesday with Honor God's Diversity Unit. Um, and it was super fab, extremely well attended and well received. We're planning another event for July. Honoring God's Diversity is a great module. If you did nothing else for your youth, but ordered that one mm -hmm. and use that piece, I've, there's some really good, right? There's a good foundational essay on that one, David. Yeah, it's video. brilliant. Um, yeah. Although the writers picked, they altered it a little bit um, depending on the age group. So it's it is a wealth of stuff, and the videos are fantastic. Um, and the infographic poster is also really really good for youth, especially. Um, I mean, uh, no matter where you what you think about this, you know, the gender um, binary conversation is what youth are dealing with. And the, the poster is all about um, how creation, you know, there's not just day and night, there's all times of day and all times of night. There's not just land and ocean, there's marsh, there's all, you know, it's mm -hmm. the world that God created is very diverse. And um, it's just a really inviting way of looking at a number of issues around diversity. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to um, move us along here, and I'm going to introduce Crosby Palmer and Rachel Watson. Um, if you'll both sort of unmute yourself and say hello so that you rearrange yourself on the screen a bit, that helps. Um, so folks... No. Hey, y'all. Yeah. Hi. Great. So let's um, start. We didn't talk about this, but I'm going to go ahead with Crosby. Why don't you go ahead and um, introduce yourself, talk a little bit about what you wrote for and your context for us. Yeah. So I'm Crosby. Um, I have a Master's of Divinity from Vanderbilt Divinity School, and my current context is I am Program Director at Camp Gilmont located in Northeast Texas. Um, and so two of the practices that I wanna highlight for similar reasons um, is the pray and the spiritual practices. That's one of the Linton um, units. And you know, all the practices we really work to have you know, tangible components where youth can take something home with them. But I think these two are just full of great ways that youth can practice deepening their faith with embodied prayer, expressive prayer, um, picking up coloring supplies and praying with those, um, but really working on different ways that they can, you know, communicate with God and deepen their faith. Um, so those are two that I want to highlight off the bat. And are those two that you wrote for Crosby? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Which is also why I want to highlight them. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>, of course. <laughs> Great. We'll come back and dig a little bit deeper, but I'll have Rachel, if you want to introduce yourself and what you wrote for in your context. Sure. Um, I'm Rachel Watson. I'm a, um, a Master's of Divinity student at um, Austin Presbyterian Seminary. Um, and my context is um, church ministry. I work at University Presbyterian Church in Austin as their seminary fellow for Christian formation. So I get to work with all of their kids from the littlest to the um, to the high school youth. Um, I, I am coming in a little bit later than Crosby did. So I have written the lament lesson plans and have several others that are coming up in the um, in the next couple months. Um, in the lament plan, it was a fun challenge to work with 
youth and lament in the way um, because you wanted to help the kids see the hope in the midst of the lament um, and not let them get bogged down too much in um, in in the lament complaining part, but in the lament seeing the hope and God's uh, uh, God's work in our lives. Um, and I really appreciated being able to pull in. Um, practices that uh, that we see in other faiths and in our faith and then in our scriptures and then in our daily lives now um, and I think the the way that we can kids are kids are lamenting and we were able to pull that in and find ways to help them see the next steps wow yeah that's great Rachel so um Crosby if you want to start us off on you know why do you believe that this curriculum is maybe unique? What um, do you think it has to offer youth ministry in particular? What's, especially in the times that we were in, my understanding is of course you started this project prior to COVID and it was not to turn into just writing about COVID experiences, right? But that things have changed, youth ministry has changed. And um, so if you wanna talk a little bit about how you see this curriculum fitting into how we do youth ministry in these days. Yeah, so not only has like youth ministry changed, but a lot of different youth groups look differently, right? So we really work to write towards like rural youth groups, urban youth groups, small groups, larger groups, groups mixed with um, younger and older youth groups that are you know, for separate younger and older youth groups. Um, and so one thing I really like is all the options that are included like when David was giving his presentation you could really see like choose one or more choose one or both um and so I think youth group leaders are really able to like pick and choose what fits and I am also a big fan of those um fun symbols that highlight oh this is a conversation this is an artistic one this is a game so you can also kind of match those with the size of your group, with what they might be interested in. Um, and just, you know, if there's low energy, you might want a game to help it, help them engage more. Or um, you might, if you have a group that's really interested in um, creative expressions, you might want to change towards the artistic ones um, or challenge the groups that aren't, right? So uh, I really like the way that youth group leaders are able to pick and choose from this and do activities that really fit their group well. Um, yeah. Um, I really appreciate all of those things as well, but I, one of the things that I that really struck me about this curriculum is the um, emphasis on the practice first, um, especially when you're dealing with youth who are going, just tell me what this looks like. Um, and they, they want the thing to do. Um, and very action based. And so all of these curriculums, uh, the, the series is start with um, with the practice and then give them ways to practice it in their daily lives. And that that emphasis on that first and bringing the scriptures in um, to show us where where that's part of the, our our part in God's story um, is I think is a good um, way to get kids engaged, especially at that youth level where that's what they're really looking. They, they want that bottom line. What am I doing? What can I do to be, to be doing these things in the world? And if you don't mind me jumping off that, kind of on that point, the activities are all things that they can do, right? Mm -hmm. So they're learning through games. They're learning through doing crafts. They're learning through um, discussions, not just the youth group or learning through watching a video things like that, not just the youth group leader telling them, but they're learning through their experiences, which I think then helps them apply it too. So um, as you think about, you know, what the curriculum offers, what, how can you, um, cause you've talked a little bit about this. So youth group versus sort of traditional Sunday school, youth Sunday school, right? And are they all one, for many, it's all one thing now. And it's not like this, you know, formal Sunday night gathering plus this. Some churches it is, but some churches is not. So how do you see this curriculum fitting into some of the different models we have for youth ministry? Any, either of you can take that one. I think the nice thing about this curriculum is all of the options. You know, so I, I see ways when I'm looking at these curriculums, thinking about the lament one that I was, was 
uh, involved in writing, there are plenty of pieces that would fit a traditional Sunday school model. And there's also pieces that um, would require more time and space and a little bit more flexibility that a youth group would offer. Um, and so I, I can see ways because of all of the options, you can start that kind of conversation in the Sunday school classroom and then pull it back in when the kids are in a youth group setting either every Sunday or, or a couple of times during the unit. Um, and there's so many, there's such a rich um, diversity of activities. I can see it being used in both those ways. Yeah, that's really interesting. I think I write imagining a Sunday school class um, and then hearing this, I'm like, yeah, it would totally fit. Just like David was mentioning where some groups spread it out over two weeks, it would really fit well to even use part of it in Sunday school and then take some of the other activities for the youth group. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, as we talk sort of the practicality of that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring Joanne into this conversation and we can kind of continue that. But Joanne, will you go ahead and introduce yourself and your context and talk about how you're using the curriculum and any you know feedback you have for Crosby or Rachel or things you'd like to piggyback on? Sure. Um, I'm Joanne Sharp. I am Director of Christian Education and Youth Ministries at First Presbyterian in Pueblo, Colorado, where it is only 1017 this morning. Um, <laughs> we, we are a congregation that for many years have offered spiritual practices to our adults, but never brought it to our children or youth. So this was my way of sliding in so that the children and the youth are also getting um, these practices. We started in the fall as we returned to um, traditional Sunday school time, um, using it for the children, youth, and we use the cafe conversations for our parents so that they could be in the loop. And we had some other adults um, that joined in. We've also done the intergenerational gathering at the end of each unit. When, when we start in the fall, we'll do the intergenerational thing as an after worship lunch event so that the whole church can get the same, can know what's going on. Um, I have pulled things from the curriculum to use with my youth group. Um, I'm blessed that I have two wonderful teachers that lead the Sunday morning program. Both of them are strong in the spiritual practices because of their exposure already. And I, I go downstairs and I think I'm gonna find them in one room and they've moved over to the big room so that they have more space to do those activities. And my youth love it, my teachers love it, my children love it, and my parents love that they're getting this exposure. Um, so yeah. I, I am, I'm well pleased with this curriculum for our youth because it's opened up so many things that the, and I hate to say this word, David, the traditional Sunday school curriculum doesn't do. So one of the things that David mentioned in the beginning of his presentation was, you know, how he spoke with other offices and many other leaders and as they created this curriculum. And one of the things that our office talked with um, David and Presbyterian Publishing about was how practices are really at the center of our, you know, Christian faith. And um, our office talks a lot about communal practices and how a communal faith is important. And so that's, you know, Joanne, you've mentioned it, Rachel Crosby, David, we've all talked about how the practice is being practiced in a different way across all ages and stages. And how does that get linked together? So 
it's so simple and yet that's really what we're all looking for is what does hospitality look like you know across all of our ages and stages how do we honor god's diversity in that way so yeah joanne rachel crosby david maybe you have something to say here how what are other ways that you've seen this sort of connect with um you know different ages thanks joanne for sharing that and so where you can pull it together yeah, I remember um, some gathering Katie hosted not too long ago. It maybe it was at EPSI, um, where the children's teacher was saying, "This is great because kids they can they can immediately connect with a practice, like immediately connect with something. You're not trying to cram some Bible story of some old people in some other time. You know they can." They can even connect with that Bible story after they've talked about the, the practice thing, then they can find that in a Bible story. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, right. And we're not just sticking youth in the basement or in some right. random youth room and they're talking about their own things. They're talking about the practices the whole church is talking about is one way to do this. You know, you may not be there yet in your congregation, but yeah. Joanne, Crosby, Rachel, anything you'd add to how we're connecting this to all ages? I honestly think it's a little hard for me to answer that because I think Rachel and I are both focused on the youth. I will say um, I recently went to another church for a um, youth conference over the weekend and I saw one of our big infographics up there and I pointed out and I was like, ooh, y'all do follow me. And um, the, the youth leader talked about how they use it um, like birth to death in their church. The whole congregation uses it in their context and like talks to me about like how it's really great because those conversations just kind of naturally happen when guardians go home and ask their kids like, well, what'd you talk about? And youth want to talk about well, how much fun they had with an activity. Um, and so it all really ties in together um, pretty naturally. I've noticed. Our church doesn't use it at every age and stage yet, but I know that um, when when we have the things linked up like that and so that the older kids are talking to their younger siblings and the parents know what's going on too, it creates those conversations organically um, and it and it places those um, practices in the homes. When we were working with curriculums, especially during the pandemic, we were lining all of them up and we were hearing um, this curriculum does it for us and lines those up all across the entire age, age span. And we saw more engagement with families in with what's what was happening in Sunday school classes. What, what I'm really loving is the fact that my younger children, the multi-age, the youth and the parents are all getting a different scripture mm -hmm. that when, when you're hovering over a family group during fellowship time, you hear the conversation. No, that's not the scripture for this week. It was this. And it just adds a whole different level of conversation because you're getting four biblical interpretations. And it's it was, I will admit, as the one who who was getting the supplies together, it did make me have to think a little bit differently. But the curriculum was laid out that I could get that stuff, and you know now I see the I see the wealth of find, of using the different verses every week. Thank you for that, Joanne. Um, yeah, I might add just a word. I, I didn't really end up, you know, the this the curriculum really every every one of the units and Stephanie, I mean, I should have shouted out to your office more than anything. I mean, really. That those conversations we had around spiritual formation in the church, you are the office in the ch denomination really thinking about that. Right. So. You had more of an influence than I, you know, let on. I mean, this, <laughs> this was, we did talk to a lot of groups, right? But really yours and what you've already been doing and your toolkit, you know, all this stuff, like we're really developing a lot of this stuff at the same time. 
but one of the one of the and we don't well the, each one of these units is grounded in a foundational essay and and so all of the writers are engaging with a theologian or a a, um, a seasoned you know um pastor um who has really thought through this practice and identified what are four dimensions core dimensions of this what bible story helps illuminate that and where have we seen that in the church history right and how do we practice it those one of the coolest things about that is if you look at our foundational writers it's the best place where we brought in diversity to the curriculum it's at the very core of the each practice we have writers from diverse backgrounds and perspectives um, with that have the knowledge to really identify and go deep into these then the, and, and we pay them a pittance these are our seminary professors these are you know people we pay them hardly anything and but they want to get into the minds of the church right um cindy rigby is one of our board members and she's a professor at austin seminary you may have you may know her but um cindy just said at our last board meeting you're you're finally like you're getting kids the correct theology from the beginning <laughs> with these stories you know so um mm. I, i'm i'm really proud of that and and we really rely on them and they all of them agreed after we pay them less than anyone else in this curriculum to write these things then they've agreed to meet with our writers so we have a good 30 minutes once we had a, on the hope one it was two hours where Charlene Jen Lee from, from LA, Los Angeles spoke with us and we were just, you know, I mean, she, she infused our minds with where this practice needs to go. Um, so I don't want to, um, and then we went and got them to get, do the videos for free too. So, awesome. so that's where the videos are. Very good. So, I don't think I can go back to them anymore, but they've all agreed to do this. So check out the videos. And you're right, yeah. Stephanie, you really could. So the foundational essay, we're hoping preachers are using that as their commentary, developing their sermon series over the over the four weeks. So they're connecting with the theme as well. Yeah, yeah, great. So people are hearing this, not just in Sunday school, but multiple levels and one little final thing we're we are gearing these towards a group our youth groups we're thinking three to five maybe youth right so these are not written for large church groups you can easily adapt that way it's harder to adapt back down if you've got 10 parts to the story you're trying to have people play right yeah great well, as we um, work towards turn, turning this over back to all of you for some additional thoughts, comments, um, at this point in the webinar, I'll invite you to ask any questions that have come up, but I'll also say, hey, what's your story about using Follow Me? Or what's your feedback? You know, how is it working for you? What would you like to see um, as PPC continues to develop it? But one thing that I've, I always say to faith formation leaders is y'all have a lot coming at you. There are so many different choices about, right? We're not, the Presbyterian Church USA is not a denomination that says, um, here's what you must use. Here are the things that you must do, right? You have all of these choices. And I just think we look at these through the lens of what tools do we have that engage us in authentic relationships and what tools do we have that um, engage us in our faith practices in everyday life? So I do think that this curriculum is one of those things, one of those tools we can use to engage in authentic relationships, which has become um, really even more important, more always important, but more highlighted in our times um, as we've gone through this pandemic. You know, we've really begun to think about what really matters 
And I think that we can use these tools for that reason. So uh, Miata's put in to the chat our faith practices toolkit that David talked about. We do have a youth practices toolkit. Our office focuses on five practices. So I encourage you to take a look at that. That's a free download. And I'll open it up. Any additional questions that you might have for writers, Joanne, um, or anything that you'd be willing to share if you were using this? Um, give you a chance to write something in the chat or feel free to unmute and have your voice heard. Stephanie, we, uh, we jumped in to this. We're using it. Um, we're using it on Sunday mornings for worship. We're using the children's leaflets that I love go with the worship, our children, um, our adults, the, co we're, the cafe. I we're not using the intergenerational. Um, the only piece that I'm um, not disappointed with, but disappointed in our use of it is the youth piece. Um, that's why I asked the question. Um, realistically, I don't like saying this, but realistically, our youth leader doesn't use the book. And so we just give him the co the cafe piece because he doesn't study. I, you know, realistically, yes, get a new youth leader that will study, but he really connects with the kids. So we've got a youth leader, and he's going to use one sheet, and he's going to show up that one time to teach it. So, but I've read the youth piece myself, and I'm like, this is so much better and so much more engaging than that cafe piece. So. I was asking if we were coming up with a cafe piece for youth, or maybe I just need to take the time ahead of time to go through the book and highlight some things. Cause it's, it's a great book. I just feel bad that we're not using that. And I don't know how many other churches have youth leaders that walk in and use a one piece curriculum instead of studying this, this great piece that you've created. It might just be us, but we have loved the follow me. It's really worked well for us. And so thank you very much. I use the children, but we use almost every piece. Amen, Carol. I think there's many that would have that same realistic situation. So I could see the benefit of maybe adding a interactive idea or two to a cafe youth piece perhaps but that might be something that you can go through and add for him yeah not saying that you're uh, <laughs> you know able to do all of that but yeah thank no, you no that's sharing. interesting i yeah i was wondering how you one it's it's a cramming everything onto two uh, front and back <laughs> the way we do now i'm always having to edit down you know there's just too much stuff. It would have to be a separate or an extra piece of activity-based stuff, but I'm, you got me thinking there. I'm not sure what it, that would be. Anybody yeah, any else? Ideas are welcome. Yeah. Any other comments, questions, feedback? I guess I would uh, sort of piggybacking on on what Carol was just talking about. I um, I had mentioned in the chat that we've used the um, uh, the intergenerational piece, which which again can't say enough about it. It, it was a great event. It was so great. But one of the pieces that I found, I was working with a team of volunteers, um, was definitely. Um, it was a little challenging to try and get them to stay focused on like we divided up the activities for the evening said okay you're going to lead this one i'm going to lead this one you're going to lead this one um and i think just because they're volunteers and like so many of our sunday school teachers are volunteers like they're just a little too scattered and sometimes it was a little challenging to get them to really focus on the meat of the activity like the actual like this is the thread this is the piece you're supposed to you're supposed to pick up on because this is going to connect to the next thing um, we got through it and it was great, but I just realized I had to do a little bit more management in that department. And I guess my question, again, relating to, as Carol's talking about, we do have either teachers or volunteers or staff people who kind of work a little bit more on the fly by the seat of their pants kind of style <laughs> on a Sunday morning. Um, how can, how easy is it to pick up the youth the youth piece and hand it to a volunteer and say, okay, you go do this. You can do this. Like impact, like, cause I want to empower, I want to empower volunteers to do the work, but at the same time, I also, you know, want to make sure that the message is coming through and that, so trying to do that without being a micromanagey 
youth director is always my challenge, so. Yeah. I think Joanne, you had something maybe to say about that, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, I try really hard to get my people, the, we use the downloads. They're $10 cheaper than the book and less waste. Um, I try to get it to them four weeks in advance. And I say, I am here to help you, but you have to tell me what you need. But I give them all the links, the videos, the whole nine yards, and they know that I'm there. And even my subs who have had to walk in on 24 hour notice, they've been able to do it. Um, now with the intergenerational thing, that's my opportunity to be the teacher. And I don't, I invite my volunteers to sit and be fed at that. And that way, if I go down a rabbit trail, then I own it. Um, but you know, that that's my one time that I get to be the teacher and I take it. Does that help Steph? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you said that. I, that when I was serving in a church, the intergenerational events were my opportunity to do the same. Yeah, if you're in a church with multiple volunteers, um, you're more administrating, right? Then you are getting to do some of this stuff, so yeah. I think when I, I was writing the youth curriculum for this lament when our children's Sunday school program already works in a format where um, somebody on staff sets the room up um, and highlights the activities that are going to be you know, that we suggest and we send that material out in the beginning of the week and if they want to do another activity we're we're more than happy to set it up for them, but they can walk in on Sunday morning and teach the children's Sunday school class without having looked at it much ahead of time. Um, is that the best model? Uh, okay, but um, but that's a lot of where people are some, sometimes. And so when I was writing this youth curriculum, I had that in my head, you know, and so I think especially the youth curriculum parts, if you had somebody on staff who was helping to make those decisions and setting the things out, the curriculum is written. So it's pretty easy to pick up most of the components you know, on the fly. So. Just to also kind of echo that, um, I'll own, I was a um, youth minister when I was in college and there was a lot of days that I planned what I was gonna do on the way to the, church right so I know it happens and that's something that David has talked to the writers about that um, we want to write for people to be able to pick it up and have clear instructions that are very direct so that they can just read glance and um, be able to lead an activity pretty simply I'll just add, we, yeah, we say, just don't give them a bunch of choices. They'll make a choice. They'll say, oh, this is stupid. I'm going to do it this way, but give them one choice like, uh, or two. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'm just sort of scanning to see if there's anybody else that is uh, going to unmute or have any other comments or feedback. Hearing none.